Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we've got the ultimate, penultimate, the challenge above all challenges, Cuphead without moving. That's right ladies and gentlemen, you heard me right. In today's video, we are going to be beating Cuphead without moving a single time. This video took absolutely forever to record, edit, whatever. It took such a long time, so I'm gonna make you a deal. If you want to see me try this challenge on Cuphead's DLC, leave a like on the video and comment down below what you think the hardest boss of the challenge will be. If we get to 10,000 likes on this video, then I know you guys want the DLC, and that'll be coming to you very, very quickly. Now, let's get into the rules. The first and most obvious rule of this challenge is gonna be no walking or running, whatever you want to call it. No moving with your legs. For our next rule, we're not taking any easy routes like Alec did. But what the hell, but <laughs> We are not allowed to dash. And to add on to that rule, to make it even harder, we are not allowed to use Miss Chalice's invincibility roll either. And to make the challenge even harder, we are not allowed to go into simp mode. Simp! 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 And to make the challenge even harder, we are not allowed to go into simple mode under any circumstances ever. All bosses must be completed on regular or expert mode. You know the drill, only 5% of the people who watch my videos are actually subscribed to the channel, and that is very, very sad. Uh. I think this challenge deserves a subscription, and if you think so too, please subscribe. Also, we've got a Discord server. Join the Discord server because you can be cool like everybody else who's in the Discord server. I said it. But yeah, if you like this video so far, consider subscribing to the channel. And if not, leave a like on the video. And if not, I hope you enjoy it. With all that out of the way, let's get right into the challenge. For pretty much a month now, I've been trying to beat this challenge on stream live in front of everybody. So if you do want to see any proof for any part of this video, I'll leave all of the live stream linked down below in the description for you to watch. I also want to give a big shout out to anybody who was in the chat throughout any of these challenges. You all are awesome. We are now on to the first boss of this challenge, the Root Pack. Ah. Well, that's a problem. That's a problem. Other than, you know, that. If I have the Heart Ring equipped, I can get some easy parries to build up my HP for the second phase. With the power of pushes via EX moves and just straight up damage tanking, we can get past the second phase and then we're on to the third phase. I'm going to use the Crack Shot to kill any things that get spawned in the third phase, and also I'm going to use my Super to stall in midair to jump over the weird beam attack. And yeah, we're done the first boss. Hey! First boss down, not so bad, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> the next boss up is gonna be Goopy Legrand. Now, unfortunately, this is the beginning of the end for this challenge because we have to start implementing strategies. So the strategy for this boss fight was to get as many EX moves as I could so then I could push myself into the corner because he had a less chance to actually hit me if I was in the corner because most of the time he would just bounce off the wall instead of hitting me. Once we were in the corner, all we could do is just duck and pray to our and Jesus that we would win and we used our invincibility and that's exactly what happened. This might be possible. With optimism very clearly flowing through my veins, we entered into our third boss of Inkwell Isle 1, Cagney Carnation. Now, the strategy for this was literally just get on the platforms at all costs, either taking damage or using EXs to push me back. As long as I got up on top of those platforms, we were set. After that, I used the crack shot to deal with any minions he sent out, and the only problems really came in his final phase. Once he enters his final phase, the only things that kind of suck is because I can't change platforms. So really all I had to do was either a perfectly timed double jump or a double jump and an EX move, and then I could actually stay on the exact same platform. After that and a bit of damage tanking, we won. Nice. 
Nice. Now, the next boss is where it becomes a tad bit iffy because I feel like you guys are going to complain about that because I know my fan base. But basically, for plane levels, since I can jump in real levels, I thought it was fair that I could only do vertical movements during plane levels because I can jump in regular levels so I can quote unquote jump in plane levels. Right? I know it is technically possible to do it without moving, but that requires two-player mode and a glitch, which I think is dumb, so I'm not doing it. Anyways, with that said, our next boss is obviously Hildeberg. Now for Hildeberg, every other phase does not matter apart from her final phase. Because during her final phase, the UFOs come from the ceiling and they actually shoot lasers down directly at you. So how do I dodge this, you may ask? I don't know. The main way was using the Divine Relic's coffee charm to build up my EX so then I could use my super to have invincibility, and other than that it's just damage tanking and we win. Oh! Oh sh! With that boss done, we only have one boss left in Inkwalaya 1. There's no avoiding it. It's the new found torture method, Ribby and Croaks. I need to get out of here. Oh my god, no! No! Why? 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 This boss is the exact reason why I thought this challenge was going to be completely impossible. And, to be completely honest, I was going to give up if it weren't for Minionek247. This absolute mad lad heard what I said about me thinking this boss was impossible and showed me that it was completely possible. And it's because of his help that this boss was actually beaten, so shout out to him. This whole boss fight revolves around the Divine Relic. Basically, what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna wanna get the Converge shot and then lock on so I'm doing a ton of damage, but not enough damage to actually kill their first phase. Then after that, I'm going to want to switch to the spread shot to kill all the minions. And then I'm going to use the heart ring, which is equipped in the divine relic to parry up until I have six HP. Once we're at six HP, we're going to do as much damage as we can with the converge shot, including using our super art to completely skip phase two. This phase skip is crucial for this challenge, especially doing it without the wishes, because when I skip this phase, Instead of killing my entire health bar trying to damage tank, I only actually take 2 damage and I have 4 health points going into the final phase. Once we reach the final phase, we're going to play the waiting game. Basically, what I'm going to want to do is wait for the Divine Relic's coffee charm to build up my EX moves and use about 9 to 10 EX moves to travel across the entire screen to parry the hand. Once we parry the hand, we pray to RN Jesus that we don't get the tigers. And after about three rotations and five minutes, we finally win. Oh my god. Oh, 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 oh. Fuck this piece of shit, bro! If you're in chat and you're spamming, you're a piece of shit. Get out of here! That's how you do it without moving! Come on! <sighs> and with that boss defeated, Inkwell Isle 1 had officially been finished without moving a single time. But now, we were on to the arguably harder Inkwell Isle 2. Alright, now that we're on to Inkwell Isle 2, our first boss is going to be Varaness Von Bonbon. Bon. For this boss, I needed specific minions to spawn to actually be able to beat it, but in the winning run I didn't get those minions, so... I don't know. But basically, all I had to do was not get the Jawbreaker, because the Jawbreaker is absolutely impossible to dodge. Other than that, everything else is possible, but they're just really hard to do without taking damage. The first mini boss up is going to be the Gumball Machine. This one is really easy as long as you have good RNG, because you don't really have any way of dodging the Gumballs, so you kind of just have to duck and hope they don't hit you. And other than that, you just stand there and hope he dies. 
Up next, we got the Candy Corn. This boss is really easy to beat, especially with Miss Chalice, because you can just jump over him whenever he comes close to you. The final mini boss of the challenge is going to be EDP. This one's really difficult to do just because of how much he moves. It's hard to dodge, especially when he's jumping around and using the icing attacks, but sometimes you can get lucky double jumps with Miss Chalice to dodge it, and that's kind of what happened here, but also not. With the three mini bosses completed, we're on to the main boss, and she sucks a lot. I mainly tried to stay on the platform as much as possible and use my crack shot to deal damage. I ended up getting my super for an extra hit point, and other than just getting extremely lucky with the head not hitting my hitbox, I don't know how, but it did not hit me. I got extremely lucky there. Other than that, and just hoping that it didn't happen again, we won. Go! Go! Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah! Oh, hold on! <laughs> oh my god, bro. That was... <laughs> that was... With those two absolutely painful bosses beaten, we finally get an easy one, and we head on to Jimmy the Great. With the heart ring equipped, the first phase is extremely easy because all I have to do is parry and get a bunch of HP, and that's all I have to worry about. Once we enter the second phase and we have the power of RNG Jesus on our side, it's perfectly fine. Luckily, the third phase is also extremely easy because the planets that he shoot open up right where I'm standing, so I don't have to worry about them. Now, the fourth phase is where it gets really weird because I can actually get the hat just stuck against the wall and it will never move. I don't know. It's extremely weird, but I don't take damage, so I'm not complaining. Other than that, I really just have to worry about the projectiles he shoots and worry about parrying to get HP back, and that's really it. The final phase is where it really ramps up in difficulty because I have to stay in one of the left corners. But after that, all I can really do is use my super for the invincibility, and then just hope I do enough damage to outlast my HP, and we win. Oh! <laughs> oh my god! That was f- <laughs> Yo! God damn! Woo! The next boss up brings back the daunting task of strategizing, it's Beppy the Clown. The strategy for the first phase is pretty simple, all I have to do is pray mid-jump that he moves forward and not backwards, and then once he moves forwards I'm going to take one hit of damage, but we do enough damage that he enters the second phase without us having to take another hit. I don't use any EXs because I want to save up for that extra hit point. But all we do is just continuously pray to RNG Jesus that we don't get hit by a dog in the bottom left corner, and we just stand there until he dies. Once he enters the third phase, we're gonna again pray to RNG Jesus that he either does the green donkey attack on the right side, or the green or yellow donkey attack on the left side, as long as the roller coaster isn't coming. And then, once he does that, we do enough damage that he hopefully dies and we don't take damage on this phase. Once he enters the final phase, we hopefully have enough HP to withstand any dumb chokes. And then after that, we're just going to want to kill as many penguins as we can, and we win. And just like that, boys, we did it! Oh! Oh! That's right, Beppy the Clown. Oh. beaten no movie your boy has done it the next boss up is gonna be Wally Warbles now I got really really lucky with the first phase because the eggshells split but they don't split far enough for you to actually get hit so you can actually stay pretty close to do a ton of damage after that the second phase is perfectly normal because that's usually how I do the second phase I usually just go up and down and try and shoot them as much as possible after that, we enter the third phase, which is quite annoying, but we have enough HP saved up from the first and second phase that we can just damage tank any dumb hits that we take, and we're fine. The final phase makes it really tricky to dodge anything I would regularly dodge, but I have my super saved up, so I can use that for a ton of damage plus the invincibility, and we get it done. 
<laughs> That's actually fun. I like that one. With those four bosses defeated, we've reached the unavoidable, donkey-loving dragon himself, Grim Matchstick. Whoa, 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 hey, 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 hey! For this boss fight, we're gonna have to refer back to the rules. Rule number... I don't know. A boss cannot be completed on simple mode, it has to be completed on either regular or expert mode. It, we're, do, we're doing it on expert mode. The reason for this is because on expert mode, the clouds actually move towards you in the second and third phase, so we only have to worry about not running into him in the first phase, which is arguably the easiest one. So for the first phase, the strategy is just to use my EXs to push me back whenever I have them, and also to do extra damage. And I also just want to try and jump as much as possible so then the clouds don't pull me into him. Once we enter the second phase, I'm going to switch the crack shot, just because I like it more for this phase. And we're just going to try and jump up and down. Preferably, I want to get off screen because then I know that the flame guys won't actually be able to hit me. But yeah, it's just a lot of watching where they're jumping to and trying to avoid them to the best of my abilities because I'm already against the back of the screen, so I can't really go anywhere. After that phase, we're going to switch back to the lobber and hopefully we have our super built up to get an extra hit point. And since the lobber does so much damage, for this phase we're really just trying to focus on not getting hit at all, but I'm going to constantly fire to get it over as fast as possible, and that's exactly what happened. Let's go boys! Let's go! <laughs> Let's go! Shout out to all the people that said that was impossible. Cause it's not! Cause I did it! Let's go! Hey! Let's go! Hey! Come on! Bro! Let's go! Ah, uh, that's cringe! That's cringe! That's actually cringe, bro. Oh, but that's not cringe! Oh, that is, that's, that's cringe. That's right, the next boss of the challenge is gonna be Rumor Honeybottoms. The first phase of this boss fight's really, really easy. If he was too far away, then I would make sure to use the crack shot, because then I could actually hit him all the time. And then if he was close enough, then I'd use the lobber, because I know it does a lot of damage. Other than that, you just have to hope for good bomb placement, and that's really all you can do. This is a perfect example of why this boss fight sucks so much, because even with Miss Chalice's double jump, it's extremely useful because I can get to platforms that I usually wouldn't be able to get to, but during here, even with the double jump and using an EX, I still can't make it to the top platform and I end up taking damage. So I'm extremely reliant on any form of RNG I can get throughout this boss fight. During your second phase, the left and right attacks are pretty much impossible to dodge, especially the ball attack, so we're just going to hope that she does the triangle one, and just try our best to damage tank until the attack's over. Once she does that, we're going to hope that she goes to the middle, because the middle's way easier to dodge, and once she's in the middle, all we have to do is just jump up and down and use our crack shot, and then we're done with that phase. Now we're into the final phase. The final phase sucks a lot, but... Hopefully by now I have my super built up, which gives me an extra hit point, and I really just have to try my best to dodge with the space that I'm given. I try to fake out the fist that I can jump over them, but sometimes that doesn't happen, and we got extremely lucky, but we beat it. No. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> that was literally a second away from being dead. The next boss up on our list is Wiener Rat. So for the first phase, we have the lobber as our first shot to do a ton of damage, and we're just going to hope that he does two attacks in a row, either the cannon attack or the catapult attack, and we need him to do both of those before he does a charge. Because with the lobber, we can do enough damage so that he doesn't actually ever do the charge attack and stays on one side of the screen for the entire boss fight. 
Now that we're in phase two, we're gonna use one EX to push us out of the way of the saws, and we're just gonna hope that we don't get closed off. Pretty much every single time in this phase, you're gonna have one time where the wall against you moves towards you, and that's just unavoidable damage. But we're really just gonna try and do as much damage as possible. Now that we're in the third phase, we're gonna use EXs to try our best to avoid the little wooden panels that fall down. So we're really just gonna try and sit in the corner and hope that we don't die. And it worked out. How are you not dead? Oh! oh! No way! No! No way! <laughs> <laughs> what? No! What? What? Yo! It was literally a second off. If I was one second later, I would have died. <laughs> the next boss up is Captain Briny Beard. I originally thought this boss was going to be completely impossible because of the barrel, but we ended up doing it second try. I, I, I have no idea. So my main strategy throughout the entire fight was I brought the heart ring with me because I wanted to be able to get parries because I can't parry as Miss Chalice because that's dashing. So I wanted to get parries to get more HP so I could sacrifice more HP to the barrel. Once he started spawning minions, I just hoped that he didn't send out the shark because the shark would attack right in the corner where I am. I ended up backing myself into a corner using all the EXs to try and dodge the barrel, but since we had enough HP built up, we could actually damage tank to get to the final phase, and once we were in the final phase, I had my invincibility super built up, so I popped that, and we won. <laughs> Who said this was impossible? Who? Let me know their name. Who said this was impossible? Nobody. Our next boss up is Calamaria. So for the first phase of this boss fight, I had the heart ring, so I tried to parry as much as possible, but that didn't really do anything because all of it was RNG. If I got bad minion pair-ups, then I was dead, basically. Luckily, for this, we got pretty bad ones, but not bad enough to actually get me killed, so I'll take it. The second phase is pretty normal, just spam if I get frozen and dodge anything that gets shot at me, and we're done. The third phase is very, very tough, but through the power of spamming and the luck of RNGesus, Jesus, we were able to get it done. Oh, sh**. Oh! Let's go! The next boss up is Sally's stage play. Now, I'd tell you what my strategy was, but I don't have one. Somehow, I don't know how, but the RNG was on my side for this boss fight because we ended up beating it in six attempts. So I don't even have a strategy for it. For the first phase, I guess my strategy, if you could even call it that, was to stand on top of the angels because if I got really lucky with my double jumps, then she would actually miss me with her attack, and I could hopefully take as minimal damage as possible, but that didn't really happen. Now for the second phase, I actually have no idea. I don't even know how I completed this phase, especially with taking as little damage as I did. I just tried to use my EX whenever I could to dodge the mice on the screen, and other than just doing a shit ton of damage, I, I don't know. Once we enter the third phase, I literally just sit there and hope I do enough damage. I sit underneath her and just use the spread shot because I know it does a lot of damage, and we just, again, got extremely lucky. Now we're in the final phase, and I just tried to do as much damage as I could, and it worked out. <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> Excuse me? Excuse me? What? What the f what? Yo! Are you kidding me? What? What was that? With that boss done, we only have four more on our list. The next one up is Grandpa. 
This boss fight, much like every other plane level, is very, very annoying, but it's manageable. It does suck not having the mobility of being able to go horizontally, but other than that, the first phase of this boss fight especially is really easy. The only thing I can really complain about is the bombs, because the bombs really suck to kill, because if you let them get too close to you, then you're going to take damage, and you can't really get away from them, because they're following you. The second phase would probably be pretty hard, but I had my super saved up, and we literally did it in one rotation. Only one bomb spawned. So, I'll take it. Once we make it to the final phase, we're literally just going to want to hope that we don't get cut off by any of the sparks. It's really easy in this boss fight, especially not being able to move horizontally, that I can get cut off by any of these sparks, plus the walls. But we got really, really lucky, and we got it done. There we go. Alright, the next boss on our list is the Phantom Express. Now, I'd tell you my strategy for this, but no joke, we beat this boss on our first attempt. I, I don't even know. For the first phase, I just wanted to use the Converge Shot because it's the best for that phase. And then during the phase transition, I wanted to get to the corner of the cart because then I didn't have to worry about the hands and I could just shoot up with the Crack Shot and hit him like every single time. Once we entered the third phase, all I could do was just hope that the right one attacked first, because I'm on the left side, so that would be automatic damage. But luckily for us, they attacked on the right first, so all I had to do was try and use the crack shot to avoid the attack, and then I could kill the left side, and then later kill the right side. Now we're on to the final phase. Again, I got really, really lucky with what happened, because I ended up getting my invincibility super just in time to be able to avoid damage. And that, combined with one damage tank, we were able to beat this. Like, bro, like, what? what uh, uh, uh. You know? What was that? First try? Like, bro. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we are on to Inkwell Hell in Cuphead without moving. And to start off Inkwell Hell, let's go to King Dice. Alright, so I think the best way to do this is start by explaining my strategy for this boss fight and then I'll show you everything else. So basically what I wanted to do is I had the Divine Relic equipped, which we all know has the Coffee Charm equipped. So what I want to do is I want to use enough EXs to push me into the middle of the screen and I'm going to want to parry the dice to get the Chips Bedigan boss fight. Then I'm going to want to get the Fear Lap boss fight and then the Mangosteen boss fight. To start the boss fight, we're just going to want to get absolutely perfect RNG. If you guys are wondering what I'm doing, I'm just resetting because I need 2, 6, and 8. And preferably if I get 2 that have hearts on them, or if I get 3, I'm like... <laughs> perfect timing. <laughs> Let's go. Alright, I'll save you from King Dice twiddling his fingers for 5 minutes, but we made it to the Chips Bedigan boss fight. With my super saved up, I use as many EXs as I can to push myself to the middle of the screen. And then I really just try my hardest to dodge him. It's really hard, especially in such close proximity. But, you know, really all I could do is just try not to die here. I tried to use the chaser or the crack shot because then I didn't have to aim. But yeah, other than just trying my best not to take damage, this phase was pretty easy. And we beat it, sacrificing half our health bar. Luckily for me, we got perfect RNG for this run, so I'm going to get more HP for every other boss fight I do, and for any parries I get, I'll also get HP back for that. The next boss up is going to be Fear Lab. For this phase, we're going to utilize two things that are very, very important for this run. Number one is going to be our invincibility that we get from using our super art. And number two is going to be the Smoke Dash Charm, which is included in the Divine Relic. 
Now, if you didn't know already, the smoke dash actually does have a feature in plane levels. It's not very apparent and it's really, really garbage, but it was super helpful for this challenge. If you shrink down to like a couple frames perfectly, you're actually able to dodge some of the ghosts because when you use the smoke dash, it actually makes you invincible for a couple frames just like a regular dash would be but only when you become small in plane levels. So we're going to use this in match with damage tanking to kill him. With those two bosses defeated, we've got 3 HP in a dream, and we're on to Mangosteen. Mangosteen is literally just cowering in the corner and hoping we don't get hit. That's really the best way I can describe this. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to save my invincibility for guaranteed hits, and other than that, I'm just going to want to use the twist up because it has the perfect angle to deal a ton of damage. And I'm just going to crouch, jump, and pray that I don't get hit. And we beat him. With the three mini bosses completed, we wipe off our sweaty palms and get ready to fight the final boss, King Dice. The RNG in this fight was absolutely insane, so I'm just going to let you watch. Holy crap! <laughs> Let's go, baby! Holy crap, bro, the RNG! The RNG! Yo! <laughs> bro! With King Dice defeated, running the clock in at about 15 minutes, we were done with King Dice and on to the final boss of no moving, the devil. And then that's just gonna shut me off, yeah. It's not possible. Oh, that f sucks, dude. Even if we had full HP from here, it's not possible. <laughs> the final boss of this challenge, and was it truly completely impossible? Well, the answer is no. Now, I could sit here and explain to you my strategy for beating this boss, but that's stupid, so I'm just gonna let you watch. Do me a favor. Thank both Sammy and Minion for the members. They're legends. They're walking dead in you. Give a little thanks in chat. Ah, oh, fuck!
please, man, please, please, please. Oh my god! Oh my god, dude! Oh my god! Oh, oh my god, man! <laughs> oh my god, dude! Ah! Uh. And there we go. So finally, to answer the question, can you be Cuphead without moving, the answer is yes. Thank you to every single person who watched any bit of the stream. Every single one of you are amazing. And I want to give a special shout out to my YouTube members. Shout out to all my walking W's, the gaming fanatic, Sammy Flynn, Minionek247, and Barely Alec. Shout out to the Absolute W, KTG, and the Absolute Mad Lad, Salty Boss. This challenge took absolutely forever, so again, if you want to see that DLC, show me your support, like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see about the DLC. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.